Hello, welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. I'm Dan Thomas. Craig Burley, Shaka Hislop, and Stevie Nicol alongside me. Raf Honigstein will be with us shortly. We start the show by looking back at France's 3 2 victory over England. Uh, a good game, an entertaining match, I think, from a neutral's point of view. Certainly from France's side, you'd be very impressed with the performance from the youngsters. For England, disappointed with the way in which they didn't capitalise in the second half with that extra man. Let's start off with the sending off, shall we? Obviously, Raphael Varane was initially given a yellow card after bringing down <laughs> Deli Ali for the penalty. The referee referred to VAR, changed it to red. Was it the right decision? This is a grey area. No, because the, the, the new law is let's try and get the triple... I don't know it was a friendly, but let's try and get the triple punishment out of the way. Penalty kick, sending off, and then ultimately a suspension if it was a, you know, if it was a competitive game. If you make a challenge to win the ball or attempt to ch- win the ball, then you don't get it. And this occasion he did neither. I mean, it was a penalty, we could agree, because Deli Ali cut across for Ryan, right. but he doesn't make... It, he doesn't make a challenge, but he, he inadvertently clips him. And, and so, if you're going to sit down and change a law, right, then don't change it until you've made it clear. There's no point in changing a law that's kind of greyish to a different shade of grey, because that's all they've done. <laughs> We're just sitting here now. How many shades of grey are there? Well, I'll tell you, there's 50. Is there? <laughs> so they tell me. So... So, so now we're in the same position we were before they changed the law. Chucky, you're in charge of changing the law. I'm not in charge of changing the law. But what you do have is a, a law coming into or, or being changed and still evolving. And that coming together with, with VAR being introduced. Now, as, as the law is written, you are, the law does have say... Have you ever heard so much nonsense? So why, why change the law so that, well, we'll change it to this... But eventually, when it evolves, it'll become this. What's well, that no, all about? Uh, well, again, nobody, football did not like the triple punishment, as Craig mentioned, so they changed the law to, to, to deal with that. But then you have a separate incident or separate technology being introduced in VAR coming at the same time. Again, one had nothing to do with the other, but they just collide on this, on this instance. I, I think, given that both are, are colliding in this way, you will see the law evolve. Now, no question, Varane did not make a, a genuine attempt to, to, to win the ball, but I, I do believe he made a genuine attempt to get out of the way. I still feel that the, the law, as is written, has a clause that referees are allowed to interpret, to use common sense interpretation. Oh, see, now, the, and now here, and here's the thing. No. The referee didn't use common sense interpretation here. Oh, there's a shot. That's, that's the issue, not necessarily the way the law is written. Well, it went, there was two of them involved in this, though, wasn't there? Yeah. No, the, it's, it's, it's the referee's the decision. It's, it's one guy who's well, the referee was sitting initially separately. Going, yeah, well, the referee was initially going to give him a yellow card. He did initially he, give him he had the yellow out, and right. that was changed. And, and somebody, somebody says to the referee, maybe you should have another look at this. But the now, referee doesn't look at it. Well, it's, it's, he it's, can't. It's, it's up to the, it's, no, it's up to the referee to then make a decision. But you can't make the decision because you've got the VAR guy, haven't you, in the truck looking at it. The so v- he's, told the, him, he's told him to send him off. No, the VAR guy... The VAR guy Tells him you need to have another look. They can't look at it. Where's he looking at it, Shaq? They, they have more just on his side. The, the, the VAR guy, didn't, didn't no, he? no, the VAR guy has no authority to tell but the, the referee. But the referee doesn't see it again. He's told. What well, then, happened. well, then that that needs to be questioned because this technology introduced the VAR guy, his remit. The limit of his powers is to say to the referee, "You need to have a look at this again." He can't say. Maybe he should be sent off. You need to but do he's this. Clearly, he's clearly told him it's a red card. The to. VAR guy, has to. His lim- the limit of his responsibilities is to say to the referee, you need to reconsider, you need to have another look. So the- he cannot say to the referee... Well, he did or, on this occasion. Or he is not supposed to say to the referee... You need to send him off. That that is totally Can you imagine that if is this was a totally against the written protocol. Can you imagine if this totally was a quarter against final it. of the World Cup? I say quarter final because England won't get any further than that. So imagine this was a quarter <laughs> final. Sorry, that was a that's fine. It's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Scotland don't even get there. Sorry, but imagine it was, and we're thinking that the VAR is going to clean everything up when it's not. There are still going to be areas of the game where we're debating even the interpretation yeah. from so, Tudor. Shaka, what is supposed to happen is that he says you need to have a look at this, and the referee's supposed to run off the pitch, look at the monitor, yes. and then come back. Yes. So they weren't prepared for this today. 
Well, I, I guess not. Clearly, clearly, they've had so long to get prepared. If we need to use this, this is what we need to do. Well, well, that, that, that's even, on, they that's, can't even get that that's right. On, that's on whose stage in the game. That, that's on whose stage in the game. That is not on, on who changes the, who changes the laws, who writes the laws, who discusses the... Pro that, that's, that's got, what's the point, that's having, just, a, what's the what's the the point of having a qualified referee sitting in the, the uh, production trucks, looking at every angle, and he hasn't got the ability to tell the referee, you've got to change that decision? Because in rugby, yeah. the referee goes to the, what they call the TMO, and he asks him for a definitive... But he gives them. I, again, I've, I've been involved in these discussions. We know that. In, in rugby, they have questions themselves. And in, for football in, uh, point of view, they prefer to have one referee make all the decisions. They feel that works best for our game, and that's what they want to do. Otherwise, the question so then becomes, why not just let the guy in the truck so make how, every single call? So how ridiculous is it that if the referee is the only guy that can change it, in this game, he doesn't get a look at it. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Raph Honigstein is with us. Of course, Raph is going to be introducing the Bundesliga next season. Uh, is there a, a concern that we're seeing all these grey areas and obviously it's still, still very much in the teething period, but there are problems? Well, there might not be problems. I mean, they tested it offline now for a year and they discovered... Uh, you know, what works well and what is more problematic. I think this one was more, perhaps looked more confusing than it was. It was actually the referee who asked for the video assistant to mm -hmm. have a look at it. Was this a clear goal-scoring opportunity? Once the VAR decided it was, he had no choice. The fact that he tries to get out of the way, unfortunately, doesn't change anything. He was denying a clear goal-scoring opportunity. He had to give a red card. Whether you like that rule or not is a different matter, but is actually exactly the right decision. And I think they just didn't communicate it very well. There was no repeat in the screen in the stadium. People were confused. It took a little bit too long still at 60 seconds, but actually did exactly what it was supposed to do. But you cannot be sent off, Ralph. That's what I'm saying. You cannot be sent off for denying a clear goal scoring opportunity. If, you've made if a you make it clear, yes, attempt, genuine attempt yeah, at the yeah, ball. Yes, but he didn't. He didn't. No, he didn't, but he also didn't make an attempt to yeah. bring the player but, down. Yeah, I I think but unfortunately, the, the law doesn't. Yeah. No, yeah. but unfortunately, the law doesn't. Uh, doesn't make that distinction. If you are not trying to play the ball yes. and you just by mistake take out the player, it is still a foul. Yeah. I, I, I know, and I, I, I completely agree with how that. Do you, just... How do you sit down as a committee, whoever changes the laws of the game, and don't actually, <laughs> somebody doesn't turn around and say, OK, we've covered everything else, but what happens if it's just a complete accident? How do you not cover that? <laughs> Away from, from uh, VAR, what stood out for you in this game? The French Clairefontaine, I oh, used to call it Bloemfontaine. Clairefontaine, the, the, the academy that they're running, is once again producing a hell of a yeah. conveyor belt of young, dynamic, powerful players who are generally all playing at the clubs. Dembele's in and out at, at Dortmund. And Mbappe at 18. Yeah, that's the thing, oh. isn't it? 18 mm -hmm. years of age. Mm -hmm. Oh, It's scary. I mean, they, they, he, Deschamps has got his hand full picking a squad for Russia. Because he's going to have a, a lot of options to pick from. And it's the same old from England. Yeah. Ah. It's just not good yeah. enough. They, they, they played second half with, ten, with 11 Actually, men. I, you, just, but England, England get the start that you, you want in any game, including an international friendly, and yet still somehow get terrorised by, by, by the French, defensively all at sea. Um, Heaton and, and go very good, and both goalkeepers very good throughout. And... and but still, England left a lot to be desired. The French, like countries like France and Spain and, and, and the big Germany, Italy and the South American countries, qualification is just, just a sideshow. Yeah. Yeah. These countries think they can get to major tournaments and if they don't win it, they're gutted. They're, but England are not at that juncture, haven't been for a long time. And if you look at all the countries you're talking about, whenever their players turn up, they've actually got an idea that at least I'm going to be playing in my position. England have got players all over mm -hmm. the place. And every single time they step on the field, somebody seems to be out of position. How do you build anything when you keep shuffling and shuffling and shuffling the, all the, the thing time? Is, the thing is as well, for all the shouting and screaming in English football about lack of opportunities for youngsters coming through, all these players are regulars at their Premier League clubs. You look at somebody like Stones, who goes for a record FIFA yeah. defender, who gets twisted every which way. 
by it's seemingly every every other French attack. It, it's not just lack of opportunities. It, it's, it's something something else about the English development. Uh, there were plenty of other matches today. Let's just take a look at some notable results. Brazil with that 4-0 victory away against Australia. Meanwhile, Argentina beat them by 2, 6-0 over Singapore. Romania 3, Chile 1, uh, Chile 2, Norway 1, Sweden 1, and it finished Cameroon 0, Colombia 4. Uh, let's take a look, shall we? The World Cup odds, oh, 101 days. Is it? No, sorry, over, just over a year. That's oh, what I mean. It's a year okay. tomorrow right. that the World Cup uh, kicks uh, off. It's 100 days in a year. No, <laughs> I was thinking badly. dog years or something. Right. <laughs> Germany are favourites, 11 to 2. France at 13 to 2. Brazil then third favourites. Uh, Spain and Argentina make your top five favourites. But that doesn't really give us an impression. What does is Shaka's ultimate world power rankings. Mm -hmm. uh, Germany, Brazil, Portugal, Colombia, Belgium. Shaq, what are you doing? Uh, Spain, what? Uruguay, Italy, Mexico, Switzerland. So there's no France. Nope. There's no Argentina. Nope. We've got to what? start with France because we've just been waxing lyrical about them. Well, France lost to, to what, Sweden in, in their last qualifier. <laughs> you did the rankings, don't you? No, I'm, I'm, so I, I don't understand how you want me to... So France, about... aren't even, France aren't even... top of group A in, in, in their qualifying. So is this about current form? It's about if the World Cup were played right now, Switch who I think right. would win. Yeah. Hold on a second, Portugal. Wait, Switzerland. Switzerland. Right. Hold on, Switzerland. Hold on. Oh, no, 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 Portugal, they're second in their group. How would they win? How would they be Port I, 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 I give Portugal. Portugal. Portugal lost to Switzerland in their first game after Euros. They're still hungover. I give them that. Since that, they've won. <laughs> since, 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 since that, they won their next five, scoring 22, conceding one. That is fantastic. What form about to Mexico? Be in. Didn't even beat the USA. Argentina. Uh, US, Mexico. I think this Mexico team are better than they were four years ago. A team that lost, debatably, to, to the Dutch in the quarters. Who were rubbish? The Dutch are rubbish. The Dutch, the Dutch got to the semi-finals. Were lost in penalties. The Dutch see? are rubbish now. They weren't rubbish four years ago. Mexico are better than. <laughs> Who are they better than? France. France. What's Chile, France. by the way? Argentina. Argentina. Did you see Mexico Mexico? got Chile in it? Did you see Mexico against the US the other night? Yeah, I know they missing some players. Yeah, I just, were they, were I just, they good? I just addressed that. I just addressed oh, that. Oh, sorry. 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 The producer was talking to me. I what, must what have missed that. What about Argentina? Argentina? Argentina are fifth in Conmebol qualifying. How are they going to get in there? Uh, you've gone all Caribbean. You. Because you make, <laughs> it's ridiculous. You make it's ridiculous. You How are you going to bring in Argentina here? <laughs> yeah, man. Argentina are <laughs> fifth. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Oh, oh, yeah. What is Jamaica? Hey, Switzerland. <laughs> They're just Switzerland. Yeah, Switzerland. He's got, he Switzerland. Switzerland. He went really. What are you, who are you talking to? Uh, Your right. Caribbean friends. Right. Are you talking to us? <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> you three. Raf <laughs> <laughs> is with us. Uh, Raf, let's talk about the fact that Germany are favourites. Uh, are you as confident as the bookmakers? Um, I mean, yeah, they, they are among the favourites. I'm not sure whether they will be the hot favourite. I think France look absolutely sensational. Um, you have to almost rely on Deschamps um, somehow getting it wrong uh, for them to at least to get to the final. Um, Germany, I, I mean, they have the depth, but do they have the same world-class players up front as France at the moment? No. And I think Brazil will come back strongly as well. So, you know... There'd be a bad Germany team, as we say, usually gets to the final. A good one wins it. Oh. Um, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure how good we're going to be oh. next year. Oh, yeah. Could they beat it. Switzerland? Perfect <laughs> 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 yeah. question. to my ranking. Uh, yeah. Germans just know how they... Who's going to win the World Cup, Craig? Sorry? That's a, well, who's, who's going to win the World Cup? It's only 100 days to the World Cup, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh... <laughs> I'm going to say... Wow, this is... Take your time. Brazil. It's all right. It really is 100 days now after that, I think. <laughs> Brazil? Shaq? Germany. Germany. Brazil. We'll be talking about this more tomorrow, because <laughs> it's a year to tomorrow <laughs> until the start of the World Cup. But before that, of course, it's the Confederations Cup. Big argument between Craig and Gab as to whether or not that competition actually matters. Uh, check it out on ESPNFC.com. After the break, we'll be discussing the future of Alexis Sanchez. Will Arsenal block his move to Manchester City? Welcome back. With just one year left on his contract, the future of Alexis Sanchez at Arsenal is very much up for discussion. Manchester City heavily linked to a move to the Chilean. However, reports suggesting that Arsenal are looking to block that move, preferring him to go to Bayern Munich. Raf, what can you tell us about this? 
Well, it's definitely from Arsenal's point of view, it's a worst-case scenario if he goes to another Premier League club and to City, who have raided Arsenal players before. The problem for Bayern is that his wage demands are so high that they find it very, very hard to meet them without upsetting the whole structure of the squad. If a new guy comes in who's not the youngest, who's not got the reputation for being the easiest guy as far as the team ethic is concerned, effort is concerned, concerned coming in with such high wages, that has a bad knock-on effect. So at the moment, the latest I've heard from Munich is that they still feel um, they're quite far away to finding an agreement as far as personal terms is concerned. And then, of course, you still got the Arsenal thing on top of that. OK. Stupid question, boys. Oh, OK. Uh, How I'll much does money matter in this situation? Well... Because, it, like, if it's, say, 250 grand to go no. to Manchester City or 200 grand a week to go to Bayern Munich... No, no I know what you mean, because when it gets to a certain level, yeah. how much do that, you That's need? what I'm saying. If yeah. you go to Bayern Munich, you know you're going to win trophies. It's Manchester like City days, is more of a building. It's not like years ago when you were actually playing for your win bonus and that was making a difference. It just doesn't happen these days, they're earning so much money. I, I think it's down to the individual. I, I don't know. Where would you go if you were him? If it was simple, City or Bayern? Oh, I'd go to Bayern Munich. I'd go to Germany. I would. It was a great club, going to be in the hunt for the Champions League again, you'd think. Uh, we'll probably win the Bundesliga. They need some fresh players. I would go to, I would go to Bayern. But then at the same time, Alexis Sanchez probably settled in England, you know, likes the lifestyle, likes the one training session a day, which you're not quite sure what you're going to get at Bayern Munich in terms of, in terms of settling personally. So it's... It, well, they can uh, always phone Ancelotti and say, well, how many sessions are <laughs> you doing a day? But to, you're doing to, two, to, I'm not coming. No, to, to your initial point, it, it really is down to the individual. He's moving from Arsenal because he wants to win things, mm. particularly the Champions League. Now, if he goes to Manchester City, there's no guarantee that Manchester City are going far in the Champions League for the next couple of years. But you know Bayern are, mm. so you choose Bayern. Rafa, is there a possibility <laughs> that we could be sat here at the start of the season... And he's still an Arsenal player. Yes, I think there is a poss uh, possibility. I think Arsenal will try to drag this out, hoping that the deal will fall through. Interesting enough, in Munich, they're not even convinced that the Man City link is that real because Pep in the past, when he was a Bayern coach, wasn't that keen on Alexis Sanchez. So they're, they're almost kind of thinking mm. maybe the City thing is just kind of a stalking horse to get us uh, to up our bid. Uh, in England, they seem to be convinced that it is more genuine. But in Munich, they're not quite sure. As it is, they find it very hard to agree to him personally. So they ca haven't even sat down with Arsenal to discuss a wage, uh, to discuss a fee for the transfer. Meanwhile, oh, Raf, one thing is guaranteed is that uh, Bayern Munich will have at least one former Arsenal player on their books going to the start of the new season. This is a bit out of left wing. Serge Gnabry joining the German champions. Where did this come from? Yeah, well, you say it's guaranteed that he will be there for the start of the season, but it's actually not guaranteed. I mean, this is a player, this is a player that they have looked at, and, of course, they were sort of the secret power behind his move to Werder Bremen. That was a move that was done with Bayern's blessing in a way. They had a, a release clause set in his contract for Bayern, which they exercised now, thinking that they have to protect him as an asset. And also, I think it reflects the problems that they have in finding a real high-profile, very exp expensive player in his position. So they've got him there almost as a backup, uh, as a standby for next season. But I still think it's more realistic for him to get this loan move to, to Hoffenheim. We're very keen on him. Meanwhile, Raf, uh, Douglas Costa, apparently, what well, his representatives in Turin talking about a possible move to Juventus. This one looks be to be very close to being done. Yeah, the Italian papers for uh, Wednesday are saying this is basically a done deal. Juventus have agreed personal terms with uh, Costa. Bayern, of course, have really been encouraging bids. Uh, so now it's a question of valuation. Bayern would like to get 50 million. Juventus, I think, want to, don't want to pay more than 40. But usually there's a way around these things with add-ons, etc. So I'd be very surprised if this doesn't go through. What do you think, boys? Good well, addition. Bearing in mind that uh, Mario Mandzukic is as good a job as he has done yep. playing down mm. that left side is really just a striker playing out there. Costa needs to get his career going again like he was under Guardiola, not so much under, under Ancelotti. I think it's a good move all round. I, 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 I like Costa as a player like, a lot and then Bayern Munich get, they gets their money back and some um, and makes perfect sense for, for Juventus as well. Uh, this ticks all the boxes for everybody concerned. Huh. He's a great player. You just have to wonder that with Bayern 
probably coming to the end with Rob, Ribery and Robin. Why do they want rid of this guy? That's what I'm thinking. All right, then. Thanks for that. Uh, meanwhile, quarantine to Liso. It looks like he will be going to, to Bayern. Uh, Raf, what can you tell us about this move? Well, it's a player that Bayern really rate. Uh, Bayern also have made very little secret that they really wanted a Verratti. Maybe Rabiot, PSG have basically told him, forget it. And now they're looking, and he's, uh, he's somebody they think from Lyon they can get. Um, again, valuation, I think, might be a sticking point. And again, it's not really the high-profile name that Bayern is looking for. And I think it kind of reflects their frustrations a little bit. They were trying to really shoot for the stars. And at the moment, it looks as if they're sort of settling for the second tier. Meanwhile, of course, Robert Lewandowski with some interesting quotes about the top goal scorer award in Germany. This is how it finished. Remember, he was, in fact, ahead going into the final day of the season. He didn't right. score. Right. Aubameyang got two goals. Uh, this is what he had to say. It doesn't hurt anyone, but it did at first, maybe because I wasn't completely satisfied with the way my team helped me. Uh, he continues and he says... Well, in fact, we haven't got the next page of that, but oh, here we are. <laughs> Immediately after the last game, I felt anger. I was disappointed with my team. That was the feeling I had. Uh, Raf, how's this gone down in Germany? Well, uh, everyone's on holiday. Oh. So, <laughs> I mean, um, the idea that, uh, you know, people will be upset. I mean, I think it, it almost makes me smile because this is a classic centre forward talking. You know, forget the fact that they've won the championship. You know, he wanted to win the leading goal scorer, uh, Cannon, and he's disappointed because they didn't put the ball next to him or, you know, give him a couple of tap-ins. I mean, I think you almost want your um, main goal scorer to be as egotistical as selfish, and it's not something that's going to be upsetting anyone. Uh, ESPN FC, with you, remember... Yeah, we don't do holidays. holidays. No, we don't. We, <laughs> don't. <laughs> we need <laughs> stories. No, we are with you throughout the summer. Uh, Find check them. your local listings for the next show. Welcome back. Now, reports in England are suggesting uh -huh. that the Premier League are looking at the idea of on Saturday having an evening kickoff and on Sunday having an early kickoff. Saturday evening, of course, meaning they can put another What's match on TV. What's early on the Sunday? I, I think it's going to be like an hour earlier from, from what it is at the moment. 11 a.m. So, so, yeah, exactly, to appeal to the Asia markets. It's early. Fans aren't happy because they're saying certainly Saturday late at night it's going to be difficult to get away from the games. Sunday early morning it's going to be difficult to get there as well. And they're saying, well, look, there are empty like... stadiums are going to damage the product. Well, there won't be empty stadiums. And, no, and is, what, is, is that... What will be more damaging to the product if the standard continues to be on a slight decline, as mm. it has been, is more damaging. But I can understand trying to move them. The Saturday night games yeah. will have a better audience, I think, TV-wise. Huge audience. But then you've got logistical problems. And people will never like change. Yes. Unlike us. Uh, Stevie? Listen, I've got experience of kicking off at 11 a.m. It's yeah. a Saturday. And it's even worse if you're talking about a Sunday. Because everybody's asleep during the game. The fans aren't even at their bed properly but yet. But if you can the, appeal the to Asia and if you can get a billion dollars because of it, because of the TV rights, who cares if the fans are asleep? Premier League are looking to sell their product. Well, exactly. The, the Premier League are not interested in the fans. And they're certainly not interested in the players because it's hard for players to be ready to to get after it at 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning. I mean, you're not even up at that time, are you? Absolutely not. No the, the, not now. Given the tribal nature of, of, of football, fans are going to be there regardless. Um, at the Premier League are interested in growing their revenues and that only everybody else is a distant second. It's, it's, well, it's not surprising from, from as far as I see it. Kind of inevitable. They will have had Friday question. night yep. yeah. last year. Yep. There we go. Uh, Mark Ogden, by the way, over on ESPNFC.com, has been writing about why Rob. the Premier League players have uh, teams, league, in fact, are uh, struggling to get some of the big players to England. OK, Kevin, for the grand prize of $1 million, what colour is the White House? Um, I know this, I know this, I know this. Um, five seconds. Oh, Switching to Geico could save you a bunch of money on car insurance? Okay. Judges? That's true, Kevin. They'll allow it. Congratulations. You're a winner. Woo! Geico. Because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Reports in England are suggesting that Jordan Pickford will be moving to Everton for £30 million. 
Does it make sense? Yes. Yeah? 100%. I wish he was going to Liverpool. Do you? Yeah, I yeah. do. I think he's a... To, for me, he is the... Up Why isn't he going to Liverpool, then? Well, they obviously haven't offered any money for him. Probably because of Mignolet at the end of the season and, and because they, they, they do have the young German backing them up. So maybe they think that they're OK. Personally, I would love Jordan Pickford in that team. Look, 23 years old, I think this is money well spent. We can talk all we like about transfer prices. But I think he'd be there for a long time. I think he's still growing, only gets better. Anybody would be happy to have him. Everton have made a good signing yet. Some people were saying 30 million for a keeper that got relegated with Sunderland. Well, that was nonsense. It wasn't his fault. No, it no. I mean, he, he was excellent for them. And it's great business. 30 million these days, this, in your day, yeah. in my day, it was fortunes, but it's chicken feed now, isn't it? Live MLS soccer for you this Saturday from Yankee Stadium. It's NYCFC against Seattle Sounders. Coverage starts at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Welcome back. All that shouting about VAR has tied Craig out. We've let him take a rest for the moment. Shaka and Stevie, though, still with me. And we also welcome Jeff Carlisle to the programme. Now, Jeff, on the website, you've been talking about Zlatan Ibrahimovic and his future and whether or not it belongs to MLS. Just a couple of days ago, you put out that there was no talks between him and LA Galaxy. However, reports just today suggesting that there have been. Uh, what's the latest? Well, my understanding is that Ibrahimovic's representatives have been talking to MLS, but a league source tells me that those discussions have been of a general nature and that... Uh, it's kind of up in the air in terms of Ibrahimovic's recovery from ACL surgery. So it sounds like things are very preliminary. I, I did reach out to a Galaxy Club source this morning, and they reiterated that they are not looking at Ibrahimovic at this moment. Uh, yes, that leaves him with a little bit of wiggle room. But I, and uh, I've also been told that LAFC is not interested. But uh, I, I think overall, clubs in the league and the league itself are kind of taking a wait-and-see approach just to see, you know, where Ibrahimovic is in terms of his rehab. He's only about six weeks post-op, so I think there's a long way to go in terms of uh, him getting back on the field again, and he's scheduled to return in January, so a lot can happen between now and then. Uh, of course there is, Jeff, and I understand that, but if you're Galaxy or LAFC, surely it's worth rolling the dice, taking the gamble. Yes, you don't know what he's going to be like after the ACL post-op. However... There aren't that many players in the world that can demand the sort of publicity that Zlatan will. He seems to tick so many boxes on and off the pitch. I think that's true. Uh, you know, certainly, I, you know, between him and, say, Lionel Messi and, and Cristiano Ronaldo, I mean, those are the guys that can really move the needle. But, you know, if you're an MLS club and you sign Zlatan Ibrahimovic and, you know, all of a sudden he's not able to, to play. I mean, all those people that bought season tickets, are, I think, are going to rightly feel like they've been sold a bill of goods. So I think if you're MLS, I think if you're an MLS team, I, I, I do think it's prudent to kind of take a wait-and-see approach. Now, it, it's all down to how much risk is MLS and the club really willing to accept and, and how much risk are other clubs around the world willing to accept as well. You know, maybe uh, an AC Milan or an Inter Milan you know, uh, maybe, you know, they're willing to accept, hey, you know, we'll, we'll give you a lot of money, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll sign you now, regardless of where you are in your rehab. You know, maybe, maybe they have a greater appetite for that. But I think if you're MLS, you know, they've had some experience with this. I mean, David Beckham mm. didn't really deliver all that was promised early on in his stay, and there was a little bit of a backlash on that. So, again, I think if you're MLS, it's prudent to kind of take a little bit of a wait-and-see approach. I mean, obviously they can't wait forever, but, uh, you know, they, I think they do – need to wait and see just, you know, how the, the coming months go for Zlatan Ibrahimovic in terms of his recovery. Here's the thing, and here's the thing I don't quite understand, boys. Wait for what? Yeah, what, what uh, surely you only really know what you're going to get until he starts playing properly, and to do that, you have to roll the dice. You have to take the gamble, and for me, it's a no-brainer. It's Zlatan. Oh, hold on. What year is this? Uh, 2017. Right. It's not... It's not two th- 1980, <laughs> where, where if you had an ACL, well, spoiler alert. then, you, then you, <laughs> your career's in real jeopardy. It's, two, it's 2017. I mean, there is absolutely no way this guy doesn't come back and play, number one. And if, if by the slightest chance he's lost half a yard, guess what? His game's not about running around. His game's about ability and quality. And so, 
anybody who has the opportunity to sign this guy should sign him regardless. I, I agree. And as much as I made the point that, yes, you, I think Zatan is worth taking, taking a chance on, it's a it's rather expensive dice to be rolling. If, if Zlatan is going to be calling whatever he was on, on Manchester United and reported 300,000 a week, and you're not quite sure that he's fully fit, I, I don't think MLS clubs are in a position to offer him that kind of money. So unless you do some kind of a bridge contract, uh, a pay-as-you-play, but then again, but you don't... Gonna, gonna bring in... Why do we keep throwing this nonsense around about throwing the dice and... What's he going to be like? Be, be, because he's, ACL surgery. But he's, he's, not 35. A, he's not getting a leg transplant. He's, he's 35 years old. Oh, it's, he, regardless of whether it's 1980 or, 20, uh, or 2017, come on. this is a serious injury with a, and a big operation and a big downside if it doesn't work out. Not, there is no club in North America that can afford 300000 a week as a gamble. Okay. Meanwhile, Michael Bradley had some interesting quotes after that 1-1 draw at Azteca. Uh, he came out and said, we have let a lot of little things drop. I think Bruce came in and has done a really good job of making sure that we get back to who we are. So this is it, isn't it? Are, in fact, the US taking a step back, Jeff, under Bruce Arena? They're going back to this defensive type workhorse as opposed to a team that was looking to play football under Klinsman. Is that what kind of Bradley's saying? Well, I think when Michael Bradley says they were letting a lot of little things slip, I, I think it was on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, you know, whether it was finishing plays, closing guys down, an attack moving off of the ball. And so, I mean, historically, the U.S. side has been a team that's been very hard to play against. And on its day, uh, can come up with an, an occasional bit of magic. But, um, you know, I, I think another thing that you need to look at is understanding of roles. Uh, you know, Omar Gonzalez, after the game on Sunday, talked about how they had two weeks to prepare in this formation as opposed to two days back in November when Jurgen Klinsmann tried to play with three in the back against Mexico. And he, he said it was fun. And it, I think it was a, a little bit easier on the players that they know what their roles are, they know what's expected, and they have some experience playing in this formation ahead of a very big game. I mean, the U.S. also had the benefit of trying out this formation in a, for part of the friendly against Venezuela. So I think it's all about how the two coaches prepare their teams. I think Klinsman tended to throw things at the, you know, at the players that maybe they didn't expect. Uh, and I think Bruce Arena is, is very practical, very methodical in the way he does things. And mm. I, I think the players are responding to that. Uh, welcome then to Extra Time. Thank you very much uh, for your tweets. Uh, which player would you pick for Barcelona to sign? Dembele or Verratti? Verratti. Hold on. Dembele or... Is Mane Dembele? Yes, I believe There's so. Just two different... One. For what position? Well, just in general, if you had to choose one of them <laughs> to make I mean, Barcelona... Because they're not exactly the same player, are they? No, if you were to choose one of them to make Barcelona better, which but, one would it be? Oh, at the moment, Verratti. Verratti. I think there's a greater need for a player like Verratti. Yes, Steve, you're nodding good. Right. Uh, Raf, when not beset by injuries, is Marco Royce considered in the class just below Messi and Ronaldo? Uh, well, I mean, that class probably compasses 100 players. Then, yes, he is in there. Um, but he is... Unfortunately, a little bit injury prone, so whenever we see the best of him, then we see a big break. It's hard to say he is in that level just below where I maybe would put Ian Robin and uh, Mbappe and Dembele and these kind of players. I don't think he's quite there. Well, I, th I think there's a list under him. I'm sorry, I'm clearing the monitor. Why? What did you do? Spit there's on it? a mark on it. Oh, can't go off. And now you get. I and now, it, it, before you ask again, you can't get a mulligan tomorrow at the golf. He's been asking all. <laughs> oh, dear. It's coming to driver. He's got an. Yeah. Right. I don't think anyone cares. Um, right, final thing. Will have VAR... you not seen extra time before? What? 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 Yes. <laughs> I have. I have not taken in quite a few of these. They don't get involved in conversation. You, right. you were trying to steer them. You were trying to steer them away from something, and then you bit it and started. Getting stuck in a conversation with him. Will, as you're doing right now with Will me. VAR <laughs> ever get better when the close calls will always be subjective? Yes. Shaq, how are they going to... They need to make it better, don't they, with regards to communicating it to the fans and the people at home as to what's going on? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Is that it? The referee should be mic'd up for start. That would make sense. In rugby, they're mic'd up. You can hear the discussions going on. Rugby's forward thinking. OK. 
Well, why didn't you do that then? That's, that's forward thinking. I think it would come <laughs> you do that, again. <laughs> rugby, <laughs> has, <laughs> rugby has rugby has concerns with their own technology for ball trying to find what works why, best why for them. Why were they mic'd up? Why was that not one of those things? That, it must be I, I, I'll be honest. I, I don't like the idea of. Uh, I don't like the idea of micing up, for, micing up for, for the benefit of the fans. Now, exchanges between the referee and the VAR are there for the officials to hear. But why can't fans hear? That's brilliant, isn't it? An insight into what well, they're it's, thinking, it's, where it's, it's going. It's brilliant. If, if you're a fan, I, I think... I, I, What's I don't, the negative? Why? I don't like the... Language. I, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't like that idea. I, why? I, I, I don't. Why would you not like it, Chef? Because I think that's between the referees and, and they make but, decisions. But they're not talking about what why, happened last why night. Why do the fans... Oh, why, why, <laughs> why, why do the fans... Why do they find? What's the benefit of the fans because hearing the referee's decision? Because then there's an insight into right. For one. example, today, Varane did this. Right, he did that. He caught him. He was in a goal-scoring opposition. He didn't try and play the ball. Therefore, so why haven't the referees been mic'd up before? Before VR? Because there hasn't been a conversation between two people. I mean, like the there referee now. shouldn't be the worried. The referee has conversations with his linesmen all the time. They are yes. mic'd up. But that's instant. That's two, three seconds. This oh, on, is much on. longer, isn't it? The referee has conversations with his second, third, and fourth officials. Yes. That's been. Going yeah. on for eons. Oh. It's not been Mike. No, all of a sudden it's VAR's responsibility. No, but it, but why not? It, it doesn't. I just don't quite see the negative aspect of it. I, because it's. I just. I don't think fans need to be part of that dialogue. No, at no, the same time, you're saying it's a the, secret the, dialogue. No, but, uh, no, but you, you're bringing this up now as though it's brand new, and all of a sudden we are able to. We've been able but to. Why can't we adjust it now? Why haven't we adjusted it 30 years ladies, ago? Ladies, ladies, ladies. I think he's just. Are you just talking? You're talking about the whole time. Are you just talking about that small? No, just segment? that conversation. Right. He's not talking about. I, I let the referees make have those conversations, make those decisions. Why do they That's have to be in private? Matters. I mean, you, why, I, I what are you worried about? Why does about? it have to be public? Because then it's, it's, it, public. It, it's a better fan experience yeah. at home. Question mark, I mean, question. Oh, it's a fan experience. They don't blow balloons. You're supposed <laughs> to give me a chance. <laughs> I mean, how are you supposed to answer questions on this part of the show, not ask a question? <laughs> how yeah, dare we bring the game to us? I'm just saying. What are you worried about? It's not as if the player's going to say to the referee, oh, you didn't keep up with play there, and he's going to say, oh, I was out last night. I'm not worried Ooh, about anything. I had 20 pints last night. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't get... Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm not worried about anything. It was there. Now, did you see the fan? No, at the wrong I, channel. I, 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 just, I, I don't think that the, that the fans need to be part of those discussions or decisions. That's they do it in rugby. That's for, for the thinking sport. Okay, well then watch rugby. That's double forward thinking. <laughs> yeah, double. <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much. If you want a fan experience, just put balloons on. Give them balloons. <laughs> Uh, ESPN FC back on your screens tomorrow without balloons. Uh, 6 p.m. Eastern. Well, I'm, 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 I'm not coming then. That's debatable. <laughs>